Hello everyone. In the previous videos, we have seen why we have to use a frequency compensation technique to the open loop of operational amplifier circuit and what are the methods that are involved in order to get the stability of open loop op amp circuit. So in brief, uh, the compensation technique we are having a two types. One is an internal compensation and the second one is an external compensation. So already we have seen what is an internal compensation technique and external compensation technique. And also in the previous video we have seen one of the type of uh, external compensation technique that is a dominant pole compensation technique. So now in today's video we are going to see uh, what is the drawback of a dominant pole compensation technique and how the drawback will overcome in pole zero compensation technique. As we know that uh, in the dominant pole compensation the major problem is the bandwidth will be less but for uh, different applications we require a larger bandwidth. So in order to provide or in order to overcome the drawback of providing a larger bandwidth we are preferring the second method that is pole zero compensation. Now what do you mean by a pole zero compensation? which it means that for the open loop op amp circuit externally we are adding one pole and one zero to that circuit. Now how it will provide a stability with the use of this pole zero compensation technique we will see mathematically. Now let us see how the pole zero compensation technique is used in order to obtain a stable open loop op amp circuit. So as we know that in the previous case nothing but in the previous method dominant pole compensation technique we are assuming that the open loop op amp is having three corner frequencies that is F1, F2 and F3. So we have seen what is the transfer function of that three frequencies. So I am repeating the same concept so that is I am considering an open loop op amp let us consider it as a A and the output of op amp is V0 whereas the input applied to the op amp is V. Now for this the transfer function of this circuit or the gain of the circuit let us indicate with A and uh, it is written as V0 by V in and we are assuming that this op amp is having uh, three frequencies okay or three capacitors which is having f c1 c2 c3 capacitors and the three frequencies f1 f2 f3 so the generalized transfer function of this op amp can be written as a is equal to open loop gain aol by 1 plus j into f by f1 this is first corner frequency and second one is 1 plus j into f by f2 and the third corner frequency is 1 plus j into f by f3. So this is the three corner frequencies that the open loop op amp circuit is having and in this case we have to assume the condition that is f1 is always less than f2 is always less than f3. Now to this circuit a pole and a zero is added to the open loop op amp circuit. So here we have to maintain a condition that the zero is having a lowest frequency compared to a pole frequency. Okay, simply I am adding one resistor and capacitor circuit to this open loop op amp circuit. So if you see how the circuit will looks like. So this is the open loop op amp circuit which is having a gain A. So V0 and V in. So to this circuit I am simply adding one resistor externally and one combination of resistor and capacitor. Okay. I am naming it as C2 and it is R2 and I am considering the V0 dash at this. So this is I can say that it is an external compensating network. Okay. Now we have to find the overall gain. Okay. So the overall gain I can write it as some A1. So the overall gain is nothing but the gain of op amp A and the gain of compensating network. Okay. 
so this I am calling it as a dash so finally we have to find the value of a1 as a into a dash now we know what is the value of a now we have to find the value of a dash as you know that from this circuit we can write the value of a dash as output voltage which is v0 dash by input voltage it is v0 now what is the output voltage this output voltage is nothing but that is taken across the resistor and capacitor impedance so now i can write this impedance as z2 and uh, it is equal to r2 plus since we are considering c2 in terms of frequency so in easy purpose i am considering s domain of impedance so if we consider the impedance of capacitance in s domain that is 1 by s c2 so finally i can write z2 impedance as 1 plus s c into r2 c2 by s c2 so now we have to find out the relation between v0 dash and v0 thereafter simply substitute the value of a dash in this equation now let us consider this as equation 1 okay now so we have to find out the output voltage v0 dash so here this v0 dash is nothing but the voltage across the impedance z2 now with the help of voltage division rule we can easily find out the output voltage at the impedance z2 as we know that the voltage division rule states that the total input voltage now what is the total input voltage it is v0 multiplied by the branch impedance so here the branch impedance is z2 divided by total impedance so total impedance is in series so it is r1 plus z2 now simply substitute the value of z2 now we will get so v0 into 1 plus s r2 c2 by s c2 divided by r1 plus z2 is 1 plus s c into r2 c2 divided by s c2 now if you simply do calculation we will get the v0 dash as v0 into 1 plus s r2 c2 divided by s into c2 and take lcm we will get it is s into r1 c2 plus 1 plus s into r2 c2 divided by s c2 now simply sc2 sc2 gets cancelled so finally the v0 dash value will be v0 into 1 plus s r2 c2 divided by now take the common s into c2 now we will get the expression as s c2 into r1 plus r2 so the finally the value of v0 dash by v0 is equal to 1 plus s into r2 c2 divided by 1 plus s c2 r1 plus r2 now this is the transfer function or the gain of external compensating circuit and we are calling that gain external compensating network gain is indicated with a dash okay so it is 1 plus s into r2 c2 by 1 plus s c2 into r1 plus r2 so in order to find out the stability we have to convert the a dash equation in terms of frequency domain now we know the relation that is s is equal to j omega by simply substituting the value of s value in a dash equation we can get the frequency relation of gain okay so finally simply substitute the value of s as j omega so omega in terms of frequency if you write then it is j is equal to 2 pi f okay now the value of a dash is simply substitute the value of s is equal to j 2 pi f in this equation we will get finally it is 1 plus j 2 pi f 
R2 C2 divided by 1 plus J 2 pi F C2 into R1 plus R2. Now let us indicate the frequency F1 as 1 by 2 pi R2 C2 which is a zero frequency and uh, pole frequency indicated with F0 or Fp then it is 1 by 2 pi into C2 into R1 plus R2. So we have assumed that the zero frequency is higher compared to the pole frequency that is proved. So here this F1 value is only depend on R2 C2 whereas here the pole frequency is dependent on C2 into R1 plus R2 which is having a high impedance. Okay, so here the pole frequency is less than the zero frequency. Now finally the value of A1 or A dash equation I can write in terms of frequency as 1 plus J into F by F1 divided by 1 plus J into F by F0. So this is let us consider this as equation 3 whereas the equation 2 we are considering it is the open loop gain of op amp circuit which is having a 3 frequencies. Now simply substitute the value of equation 3 and equation 2 in equation 1 in order to get the overall open loop gain. Now the value of total overall gain that is A1 which is equal to A into A dash. Now what is the value of A? It is AOL by 1 plus J into F by F1. 1 plus J into F by F2 and third corner frequency is 1 plus J into F by F3. Okay and the value of A dash we have obtained that is 1 plus J into F by F1 divided by 1 plus J into F by F0. So finally A1 value will be simply substitute these two equations then we will get AOL by 1 plus J into F by F1 1 plus J into F by F2 1 plus J into F by F3 into now what is the A dash value it is 1 plus J into F by F1 divided by 1 plus j into f by f0. So 1 plus j into f by f1, 1 plus j into f by f1 is cancelled. So the final expression or the final overall gain of pole zero compensating op amp circuit is a1 is equal to aol by 1 plus j into f by f0. 1 plus J into F by F2 and the third corner frequency it is 1 plus J into F by F3. So this is the overall transfer function of pole 0 compensating network. Now, now what is the value of F0? So F0 is nothing but a pole frequency which is equal to 1 by 2 pi C2 into R1 plus R2. Now we have to design the values of R1, R2, C2 in such a way that it has to obtain the relation that is F0 less than, F1 less than, F2 less than, F3. So if you maintain these values then we will achieve this condition. If you achieve this condition simply we can convert an unstable system to the stable system. Okay. Now let us see how the waveforms of or how the frequency curves of uncompensated circuit and the compensated circuit looks like. For example, if you observe uh, the uncompensated op amp circuit is having a three corner frequencies that is F1, F2 and F3. Okay. And uh, if you draw the frequency curves then F and let us consider this as a gain and I am assuming the gain is maximum is A over here. So this is having a three corner frequencies which indicates that it is having three roll off. 
so if you draw then we are having a three roll of let us assume this is one roll of second roll of and third roll of okay so here it is minus 20 db per decade and uh, this point is minus 40 db per decade and the third one is minus 60 db per decade it is having a three roll of so i am pointing it as f1 and second roll of is f2 and the third roll of is f3 okay so this is the curve of uncompensated op amp circuit now we have to see how the curve of compensated op amp circuit will looks like so as we assume that for the compensated op amp circuit the pole frequency is always less than the frequencies of f1 f2 and f3 of three corner frequencies which means that so at this point the frequency pole frequency f0 should be present and we have to design the f0 in such a way that this is the first roll off point okay so here this is the maximum gain let us assume and at f0 value it is having one roll off and we have to design the values of again r2 r1 c2 in such a way that the gain must be roll off to 0 db at minus 20 db per decade okay so at the frequency of f2 it simply crosses the 0 db of a gain so now if you assume this is the bandwidth so which is f2 which is greater than the pole frequency and uh, it is having a larger bandwidth compared with the dominant pole compensation network and it is simply having one roll of which is minus 20 db per decade so this is how the compensated and uncompensated curve looks like thank you